showing him that's the kind of punch. Welcome back uh, to the Sports Personality Show on Atlantic Television Network. Of course, I told you we'll be taking a look at Stanley Mwabali on the show uh, this uh, morning. And of course, uh, with me to do justice uh, to um, Stanley Mwabali this uh, morning uh, is Emmanuel Michael. Michael, good morning to you. I know you have a very good knowledge of uh, the man Stanley Mwabali. Yeah, good morning to you, Kingsley, and good morning to our viewers. Of course, uh Telling Wabali, looking at the exploit so far that he has, uh, you know, done in the ongoing African uh, Cup of Nations, we can't actually, you know, uh, stop talking about him, and that is the reason why uh, we are going to dig into the archive as we look into the life of uh, Stalin Wabali. All right. So of course, uh, so many do not know that uh, his name is uh, Stanley Bobo Wabali. Yes, that is his full name. But so many person call him Stanley Wabali, but they don't have that. That's they don't know their middle name, <laughs> Stanley Bobo Wambali. Of course, he's a Nigerian professional footballer who plays as a goalkeeper for uh, Premier Soccer League Club, Chipa United, and uh, the Nigerian national team. Uh, let's take a look at you know, his family. Of course, he was born on June 10th, uh, 1996 in Lagos, uh, Nigeria, raising a family with a deep love for football. He cultivated a fervent passion for the sports from an early age of course um, you know what we actually tend to of course get at this point is the fact that the man was actually raised in a family that loves football uh, yes of course the father as well uh, was very very passionate about football he had other uh, siblings as well who also love football and um, it's not surprising on why you know he pick up the career as a profession for himself uh, talking about football but while doing so, he had to combine it effectively with uh, his educational career. You know, while he was very, very young, at the age of uh, four or five years, he was uh, already kicking um, the, the, the orange, you know, which is the uh, football version of uh, what a kid, you know, children do when they are growing up as a kid. And for me, it was not, uh, you know, his passion and love uh, for football while kicking the round leather game. You saw his. Uh, we saw his mom as well at some point, you know. Uh, when he come back late at home, he was be, he was he would be beaten by the mom, because most time, uh, according to to the story he told some time ago, that uh, while they sent him on an errand, and uh, he couldn't just uh, take his eyes off uh, when a football match is being played in the streets. And of course, you know how big and how huge, you know, Lagos is. It's one of the biggest uh, city in Africa. Mm. You know, and there, there are there are talents are banned all around, all across the street of Lagos. So most time, when they send him on an errand, instead of going straight to the errand, he will just uh, decide to you know enjoy himself on the street while his uh, pets are playing, uh, you know, football. Then uh, it was uh, he, according to him, he said they used this uh, football they call flying carpet. Then mm. you know those uh, rubber uh, ball, kind of ball that whenever you kick it, it goes very far wow. because of the fact that. Uh, it's very very light so you know uh, but at the end of it all the mom after you know the punishment from the mom the dad will also call him and tell him that uh, i know that you have the passion for it but whenever you are sent on an errand first come and deliver the message before you can go to the street and play mm. you know of uh, the ca flying carpet uh, football with your you know pairs out there so with uh, you know that passion for the game at the early stage you know it was you know, very, very vital for his uh, developmental process. But like I said, he also, you know, had to cap that up. He went, he put it side, uh, side by side with uh, his uh, educational career. Even while, while he was still in primary school as well, he also took very active part uh, in, in football. Stanley Wambali, uh, one man, of course, uh, that has actually helped the Super Eagles uh, to go uh, far. And in fact, gets into the semi final of the African Cup of Nations in uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Um, and uh, let's take a look at uh, his education, though. Uh, you've actually uh, threw a little bit of, uh, threw a little light down there. Uh, Mwabali completed his secondary education at St. Grogris uh, College in Lagos, where he also played for the school team. He then enrolled at the University of Lagos, where he studied business administration and management. He graduated with a bachelor's uh, degree in 2018 and he balanced his academy and football careers by playing for various clubs in uh, the Nigerian League while studying 
at uh, the university. That will be that, you know, uh, I think um, would, it would be, of course, a very, um, I, I, I actually imagine that the man, of course, um, trying to combine education and football, of course, that's uh, well, actually, I've given him a very, very, you know, tough time because managing, you know, boots is not actually easy. Yes, of course. Uh, you know, while growing up as a footballer is that you want to be, and for the passion and love that you have for the run leader game, it's always very, very difficult for you to concentrate uh, 100%, you know, uh, in school. Why? Because, uh, you know, uh, there are some coaches that you play under while still growing up. They are so so disciplined that uh, if uh, uh, 4 o'clock or 4 p.m. was supposed to be the time that every uh. player need to attend uh, you know, training, if you are not there by that 4 p.m., you will definitely be punished seriously you know, by some of the coaches out there. And that is how uh, disciplined you know, some of the coaches were then. But that didn't deter him as he was able to push uh, through a combined boat. And he talked about his uh, secondary school uh, you know, time. He was so very, very vital in the in his uh, secondary school uh, football team then that whenever the school, you know, then, back then, there is always uh, this uh, competition out there within schools, out there, it's either the principal cup or whatever, or whatever cup out there. Uh, during that time of sport uh, activities uh, in those uh, secondary schools, they discovered that he has so, such talent that they, they can't actually do away with him that Whenever his school, the secondary school, then is playing a game against any other team, uh, there is a rumor that they will be playing against. Other. If Stanley Wamley is not in the training, they will have to send for him. I'm sure they will have to send some delegate to go and inquire from his family mm. that for so 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 time we have not seen your son. Where is he? You know, and uh, that is because they had this belief and trust in him that whenever he manned their post, then. The arrest are sure that indeed, if they were supposed to concede like 10 goals uh, with the presence of Stanley Wabali, it would be one goal. So he was so good at that point, you know, to the extent that they can't just do without him. I mean, th there are some players within your team while growing up, either in the primary school or in the secondary school, that whenever you guys are playing, if you don't see that player, that your teammate, is look as though whatever you are going to train that day or the, uh, the, or the competition that day it, it will amount to nothing mm. because they actually have attached so much important value to you. Why? Because of what you bring. You are that player that can be able to make the difference. And this is what uh, Stanley Wabali epitomized as at then uh, in his uh, secondary school. But then he also graduated and went to to, to tertiary institution. He also continued in that format. You know, in, in the university, you know, we have different uh, departments as well. So his department as well as then, he was the, the, their number one choice as a goalkeeper then. that whenever they have departmental uh, competition, uh, he was the one that standing between uh, the stick. And by so doing, he was able to establish himself. And that is why he became uh, the team favorite uh, as, as uh, then. But then, I tell you, it wasn't quite uh, easy for him combining a uh, football career at his tender age with an uh, educational career. But then, because of the love, like I keep saying, the love and passion that he has for the game, he couldn't just, uh, you know, drop uh, football in the pursuit of his career. He had to effectively combine both. And I think for me, of course, uh, he must actually be, um, you know, uh, someone who has that determination, someone who has that, you know, passion uh, to succeed because going through such, you know, process, combining your studies and, um, education is actually a very very uh, huge one of course but thank god he was able to surpass that hurdle and today is now of course the most talked about goalkeeper now in africa as it is and uh, and most especially mm. uh kingsley you know here in this part of the climb talking about africa i, I mean nobody actually uh take proper care for or for you as as a teen trying to grow, grow uh, through the rank out uh, it's always very, very difficult. Some of these uh, kids don't always uh, stay as a boarding school uh, student. Mm. Some of them come from homes, and you know, the distance between your home and your school sometimes is pretty far. So, but every day you take the risk of uh, trekking for a such long distance to get to your school mm. and also come back. After the school dismissed, you need to trek back down to your home as well to refresh up, you know, and possibly go back for 
you know, extramoral uh, classes. Sometimes he even skip some of the extramoral classes and go for training. That is to tell you the passion that he has. So it is always very, very difficult in this part of the climb. But in, in the more senior climb, they have, you know, uh, this process that they have set in place, the structure that they have set in place that if you want to become a footballer, you just go and enroll in an academy. That is where you attend your school. You have timetable. This is the time for your lecture. This is the mm. time you need to rest. And this is the time you need to come for training. And this is the time you need to, you know, go back to train. This is when you need to go to school. You know, it makes it very, very easy because it's like a burden, a, a burden school mm. where you are there. You no longer go to your, you know, parent house because of the rigors of uh, going to and fro from school down to so everything is just made very easy for them and the facilities as well is almost in place top-notch facilities that can also enable you know some of these uh, you know kids to get the best out of what is embedded in them which is the talent but here in africa it's quite difficult and for you know standing wabali to rise from this rank looking at such a you know hostile environment here in africa to be able to combine your school and uh, you know push, also pursue your football career it is mm -hmm. always very very difficult but uh, out there the european counterpart they make they make this very very simple for mm -hmm. uh, for their players or for their young ones and they just like uh, you are hearing right now that the kids of cristiano ronaldo that of lionel messi even the junior I mean, some of them don't even tend to come to, to the house because they have enrolled into different uh, academy out there. Mm. From there, they go to their school. They have everything that they need. Sometimes their dad or their mom, they just have to pay a visit, you know, to them. So they don't pass through the, you know, stress of coming home and thinking of how to get a proper facility to train with. So all those things have been provided as a platter of gold for them. What they need to do is just, you know, settle down. Do what you need to do. This is the time of your assignment. This is the time you need to come to training. This is the time you need to eat. And this is the time you need to rest. So all these things have been structured perfectly in a way that it makes it very, very simple for them to focus, you know, mm -hmm. and harness the potential that is in them. But here in Africa, the hostile environment, you know, and everything makes it very, very difficult for any kid out here, you know, to pass through the rank and become you know a superstar so some of them that have made it you know to the top are there we just need to give them uh, kudos out there if you hear the story of uh, victor osime one of the latent and potent striker of this world it might shock you he was hustling selling pure water in the streets of lagos in uh, you know uh, in, in hold up so that is to tell you how difficult it is for you to you know survive as a footballer you know or as a kid trying to pursue you know, your football career, combining mm. that with, uh, you know, education, it is always very, very difficult. And for this young man talking about Stanley Mwabale, to pass through those process, I mean, it is very, very massive. You can't just uh, overlook uh, some of those stress and all those, you know, that he has to pass through. But then he didn't give up because this is what gives him joy. This is what, you know, makes him happy. And uh, he, according to him, some time ago, he said that he can never quit, not for anything. To quit the game that makes him, uh, you know, so happy. All right, we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed and see how Stan Wabali, of course, uh, continued to uh, make you know Nigerians, you know, proud. Already he's making Nigerians proud already, uh, especially in the African Cup of a Nation. But let's take a look at um, his uh, career. Wabali's career began in primary school, where he was playing as a goalkeeper, taking his talent to the next level. He became a part of for the local academy. Uh, future stars. Later, he transitioned to the Pepsi Football Academy, refined his skills and drawing the notice of a scout, which means, of course, he actually uh, played in an academy. Yeah. I think uh, that was where maybe he actually got, you know, um, to be noticed and before he went down, you know, to play for uh, club side. But let's take a look at the academies, you know, we have in uh, the country, talking about Nigeria. Are there still uh, good academies, you know, in uh, the country that uh, you know ready or ready, of course, to churn out talent when it has to do with uh, football? 
Uh, yes, of course, we have uh, you know different academy in Ade, but how effective this academy is is, is another a question that uh, it need, need more explanation and it need more time for us to be able to dive into that arena. The only one academy that uh, is so popular that everybody hears about is the, just the Pepsi Academy. Uh, but you ask yourself how many players, you know, have come through that rank. Uh, I mean, uh, these days they have also used money to monopolize the system. I was also went for, you know, uh, a trial in that same academy. Uh, back in 2015, in 2016, I, I can't actually, you know, uh, forget that memory. Went to Abuja for a trial. We had to stay there for about three uh, good weeks with an intensive uh, training, morning, afternoon, evening. You have to train so hard. You don't even have time for you to, you know, uh, have time for yourself. And the food that, you know, we eat there is it's ration. You can't eat beyond what they give to you because mm. everything is being rationed. We had to stay in the camp for three good weeks, you know, for that trial. But unfortunately, on the day of the real uh, day when uh, some European scouts, you know, came to, you know, scout for uh, good players, a match was organized. And some of us have been uh, in the camp for about three good weeks. Uh, on the D day, you know, uh, what we just saw in that early morning, was uh, some big men in quotes, you know, driving their Lexus Jeep and different kind of cars, bringing their kid out there, you know, down. These are people did not even start the camping with us. I mean, what we actually passed through within this space of one week, uh, three weeks, my brother, it was hell. But then you were pursuing something. You have to sacrifice in anything just to get, you know, their pick. But surprising, like I was saying, on the day, of that real trial where some you know, white men came to do their scouting out there. We noticed that few persons who have not been in camp with us, they just landed. And that very day, they, 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 they gave them first team jersey, you know, for them to start the games. And some of us that have been in the camp for about three weeks, you know, were, were sidelined, were kept on the bench, you know. And why? You will ask yourself, you know, envelope has changed hand. And for you, you, you don't have that godfather mm. yeah, out there that can be able to, you know, uh, speak for your favor. And you know what it means. So it was a very devastating experience, I must tell you. So what am I saying in essence? That there are academies out there, but it looks as though they've actually monetized, you know, the process and make it very, very difficult that if you don't have money to pay your way in, even if you have the talent, you have what it takes to excel. My brother, you can't break even. Why? Because you don't have the God or uh, Father to help you. You don't have the money, you know, for you to pay your way in and, uh, you know, get the opportunity. Of course, there are some of them that uh, literally, as a footballer, you know, when you see someone on the ball, someone who truly knows the football, this thing is in you. I mean, even if you, are, you woke up from the sleep, and the ball is given to you. It just it, it, a ball was thrown to you. The way you control the ball, the way you chase the ball, the way you, you you are able to control the ball, someone will certainly know that ah, mm. this thing is in this guy. And some of them that came, you know, with, with their uncles, with their dad, my brother, if they throw a ball to some of them, just trap the ball, control the ball, my brother, I, I, I can't tell you that we, in short, I will say not we, I am better 110% compared to this lad. But mm. I, didn't, I didn't make it through. Many of us who were camping for about three weeks there didn't mm. make it through. Why? Does it mean that we don't have the talent? No. It's just that money has changed hand, you know, and uh, the process has been corrupted. Mm. You know, they no longer look at, uh, you know, your potential, but they look at what they intend to get, you know, in return before they can actually give you the opportunity. And it's very very sad and that is the reason why we have so many talent cut across the nation every state even right here in River State we're talking right now we have talent cut across footballers good one go to the streets yeah. you see them but why are they wasting no no opportunity for them some that have the platform you know they don't have what it takes they, they don't have the financial firepower 
you know, to go there and break the protocols and make themselves known. So uh, why did I have to go back memory lane? Because it is an experience I passed through. I, I, I know what it is. And it, it might be so uh, bitter, it might be so uh, devastating, but that is just the truth. Sure. You know, I can't hide it. I passed through it. So the system has been monetized. The system has been, you know, corrupted that they, 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 they no longer look at, you know, uh, your talent, but they look at, you know, the pecuniary interest, what they intend to get first before giving you that opportunity. Mm -hmm. But in all, there are academies cut across, you know, the nation. But how many of these academies is ready to overlook the brand envelope and give opportunity to the ones who truly have this talent in them? These are some of the, the, the issues uh, but is it is the, could it will you say that uh, could actually be the reason why uh, you know most of the time of course uh, we don't uh, turn our t talents down here in the country as much as of course uh, we should. It, it, yes, it's very simple. We have so many talents out here, and that is why you discover that any any Nigerian that just got the opportunity to break even, my brother, the next one or two years, you don't see the person here in Nigeria again. The person will run outside the country. Some of them even prefer to nationalize mm. for other countries sure. than Nigeria. Why? Mm. Because of the system. Mm. Because of the system. So uh, the system has made it very difficult for us to be able to churn out, uh, you know, uh, millions or thousands of JJ Okocha, to churn out thousands of Kano Wanko, to turn out thousands of Rashidi Yakini, you know, not that we don't have them. We have them cut across each state, you know, in this um, nation called Nigeria. But then the process is just so, you know, messed up that, uh, I mean, uh, it is quite unfortunate, you know, to say the least, because if we are actually, you know, uh, getting down to the business of it by, you know, being very, very transparent in the process, allow an open camp where even if you, you are coming from a very poor background, you don't have the money, but you have the platform and they give everybody, you know, the, the equal opportunity to uh, come and express themselves, show their talent out there. I tell you, Nigeria should have been the Brazil of Africa because we mm. have talent. All right. We'll see how all of this, of course, uh, will actually pan out. Uh, we hope that, of course, uh, there will be a change in the system. Of course, uh, this is a system that brought out, you know, one man that has helped Nigeria today, and we hope that uh, all of, uh, you know, corruption do not creep in uh, to destroy uh, this uh, system. And uh, well, that we're celebrating one man today, uh, Stanley Wambali, Wambali, because, of course, he was able to pass through an academy, and we hope, of course, the academies down here in Nigeria will be able to, of course, uh, uh, produce talents and uh, not looking at the side uh, for what they stand to benefit in terms of financial uh, reward at the end of uh, the day. We still have more, of course, to talk about uh, the man Stanley Wambali. We're going to take a look at you know his time down here in Nigeria before he went down to South Africa to play for Chippa United. He actually played for some clubs down here in the Nigerian Premier Football League, and I believe we really want to know uh, those uh, uh, clubs as well. We'll take a short break and when we'll come back, of course, uh, we'll uh, bring you all that you need to know about the Stanley Mwabali, uh, talking about his time down here in the Nigerian Premier Football League. Please stay with us.
from the lines across the ocean to the land beyond the mountains through the Sahara we bring on sport news live analysis expert discussions on trending stories in politics business socio-economy sports and documentaries so catch all the updates on the happenings around the globe stay focused on the fact today only on ATN. Every day our lives are changed by history. We are one people, all of us. Leaders, politics. Nobody's ambition is what's the plan. I have fought a very family. Natural occurrence, war, and the world economy. I belong to everybody, and I belong to nobody. ATN covers it all on ATN Politics today. Welcome back, FC Sports Personality Show on Atlantic Television Network. Of course, we're still taking a look at the life of uh, Stanley Mwabali. Of course, he is a sports uh, personality on uh, the show today. Let's take a look at you know, the clubs he played in the Nigerian Pre he played for in the Nigerian Premier Football in 2019. Mwabali uh, joined uh, Go Round FC, a Nigerian club that plays in uh, the second division. He made his debut for the club in a league match against Abia Warriors and kept a clean sheet. And in 2020, Mwabali secured a move to Imba, one of the most successful and popular clubs in Nigeria. He signed a three-year contract with the club uh, but did not get many opportunities to play due to injuries and the COVID-19 pandemic. And in 2021, he decided to leave Imba and join Lobby Stars, another Nigerian club that plays in the first division. He was expecting to get uh, more playing time and exposure at his, at his new club, but uh, he later realized that he was not happy uh, down there. And in 2022, Mwabali made a bold move and joined Chippa United, a South African club that uh, plays in uh, the Premier Soccer League. He became the first choice goalkeeper for the club and impressed many with his uh, uh, performance. And uh, of course, those were the club go round, um, Aimba. Aimba. Uh, Lobby stars, of course, these were the clubs, of course, Stanley Wabali 
uh, played in the Nigerian Premier Football League. So, um, I don't know what you make of his time in the Nigerian Premier Football League. Uh, well, his time in Nigerian Premier Football League, I think he started at uh, Goran FC. You know, but then he didn't have uh, you know the greatest of all uh, time or the opportunity to you know be able to express himself out there because it was like the second choice uh, goalkeeper. And you know what it is, you know the goalkeeping department is a very very sensitive uh, department. I don't get to alter you know players every now and then because you know uh, I mean because of how sensitive that department is. It's not like any other department where players come to fight for. You know the jersey week in week out. If you don't give out your best, you are afraid that you may lose your place. If another person comes and do, you know, better than what you are doing, you are going to sit on the bench. But the goalkeeping department, uh, the coaches, they are very very cautious not to, you know, change that department to change, uh, uh, you know, uh, keepers every now and then because by doing so, it might actually cost them. So, in Goran FC, this is best. Know, like I said, but then he discovered that he will be having limited opportunity, he had to push. You know, I went and joined uh, Enyemba, which is one of the most successful team here in uh, Nigeria. You know, and from then, though uh, his uh, progress was hampered because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, as I then his chances of playing was very, very limited. But he moved. You know, that is how he kept moving until he went to Chippa United. But in all, he will say that. Uh, you know, uh, he didn't have the best of his game right here in the NPFL, but uh, on some of those uh, few cameos that he made and some of those appearances, he was able to, you know, prove his worth out there. And that is why, uh, you know, Chippa United came for him. And of course, you know, out there in South Africa, uh, their league is more organized and more lucrative compared to the Nigerian uh, league. Uh, whether you like it or not, that is just the truth. You know, going by statistics, that is just the truth. The South African league is way better and more organized than the Nigerian Premier Football League. And uh, if, if I were to be a player, apply my trade here in uh, the Nigerian Premier Football League, and uh, a club from South Africa comes for me, my brother, I will pack my bags and baggages, in short, and start running. I won't wait for anybody to tell me to go before I will take my decision. I need no consult any oracle before going there. Why? Because if I go there, I know I have a better facility to train with. I know that my salaries, my emolument, my uh, match bonuses will be, you know, uh, will be coming as at when due. You know, uh, that is why he was able to live here uh, to the shores of uh, South Africa and there he was able to stamp his authority there and uh, he started, uh, you know, manning the post and was able to prove, uh, you know, his worth out there. And Courtesy of uh, his uh, superlative uh, performance so far in this African Cup of Nations, um, that has gone unnoticed, uh, you know, that has been noticed rather as well, that Chippa United now has actually increased his, uh, you know, valuation, mm -hmm. you know, because of his, uh, you know, superlative show. They've actually increased uh, his, uh, you know, price tag. So if you are out there now as an European club, thinking that you are coming to get Sterling Wabale for a cheap uh, amount of money. My brother, you need to take twice because his stock has actually risen right now because of his uh, display at the ongoing African Cup of Nations. Mm. Stanley Wabale, the man of uh, the moment. And of course, um, you know, talking about his time in the Nigerian Premier Football League, uh, that actually brings the question, if Stanley Wabale, of course, can pull out from the Nigerian Premier Football League, went down to the South African League and was able to get, you know, um, the a number one position down there at Chippa uh, United. That is to say, um, that is something. Because when he was here in the MPFL, uh, we didn't see more of him. Of course, uh, this performance we're seeing wasn't that much, of course, in the Nigerian Premier Football League. Does it mean uh, that um, there is something hindering the progress of players? In the Nigerian Premier Football League? Of course, it's very simple. You know, uh, there are many things uh, hindering the progress of our players. I mean, we have hundreds and thousands of Stanley Wabale right here in Nigeria Premier Football League as we are mm. speaking. But the system wouldn't allow, you know, those players to thrive. I will give you a, a, a quick example. The goalkeeper of Doma United is one of the best hands presently in the Nigerian Premier Football League. Prior to the preparation to the African Cup of Nations, we had about two of the best uh, goalkeepers, you know, 
that I've kept about 14 to 15 clean sheets so far. But it might interest you to know that Joseph Pissero had to overlook the Nigerian Premier Football League. He went as far as South Africa to be able to search for Stanley Wabale. Does it mean that we don't have other players right here, other goalkeepers that are better than Stanley Wabale? Of course we do. But according to him, he does not trust the process. He doesn't yeah. trust the Nigerian Premier Football League, the organizational structure, the, the, the everything about it. And that is why he had to go for where he feels that, uh, you know, he can get a player that is good enough for him, you know, and you can't actually blame him. You know, I had some, before the Nations Cup uh, squad was released, you know, tongue started wagging. Why does he uh, fail, to, why did he fail to include uh, about four or five Nigerian players in the uh, squad? This, this and that. We are not giving opportunity to local based players. My brother, this young man was given a target mm. that if you don't pass the semi-final, I mean, if you don't get to the uh, get to the semi-final, your job is on the line. And you want such man that have been given such target to start doing an experiment in a league that he doesn't trust the process, you know? And for me, people began to, you know, speak so many things against him. Uh, there is only one uh, Nigerian Premier Football League that was taken, which is Olo Ruleke Ojo of Enyimba. Uh, uh, and for me, it's quite clear, that is the truth, that our league, the way we manage our league and the processes is not, you know, uh, that standard enough for one, for you to repose your confidence coming to the Nigeria Premier Football League and pick a player mm. and integrate such a player into the national team immediately. No. But in the past, in the 70s, 80s, we saw bulk of the national team players being formed from players playing their trail here in our local league. Why? Why? The, the process was very genuine. You know, the, 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 there was this seriousness, a deliberate and a conscious plan towards developing the league. I mean, when you hear of Iwanyangu National, then Enugu Rangers, these are teams when uh, stationary stores, these are teams that have produced a lot of you know, players mm. that play their trade in the national uh, uh, team. I mean, we've actually produce a whole lot of good players coming from the shores of the you know the, our league here but now you find it very difficult why the excitement is no no longer there I, I i can also still remember some time ago i told you that my dad then said whenever you know rangers were playing that he had this man uh emmanuel okala that whenever he hears the name emmanuel okala he will have to take excuse from work the next day just to go to the stadium and watch some of his uh, you know, heroes play. Not that these players were coming from abroad. No. They reside here. They apply their trade here. Mm. But because of the seriousness of the league then and how effective it was, I mean, you go to the stadium then, everywhere will be filled. But today, even when our own Rivers United is playing, my brother, go to Adoke and Makama Stadium and see whether you get uh, about 500 fans out there. You ask yourself why? The passion is no longer there. Why? Because mm. of the way, you know, the league body have decided to, you know, uh, carry, carry it. So, uh, uh, going back to the question, I think, and I know, not that I think, I know that we have hundreds and thousands of Stanley Wabale right here in our league. But it's just that the system cannot allow them to thrive the way they are, you know, thriving out there. The facilities first, we talk about it, it's another problem. Our mm. beaches here, it's another problem. You can't compare most of our beaches here down to the South African beach or Algeria, Morocco, name it. The difference is very clear, you know. So these are some of the reasons uh, that have actually hampered or that is hampering the growth and development of our locally based players here. And the, the league body, they need to do a whole lot in that regard. It's actually a very huge worry because you ask the question, how long are we going to continue in this direction? If we want to play uh, maybe the African Cup of Nations or the World Cup, we have to depend on the foreign based you know, uh, players, of course, uh, to execute this matches. Why? Because... Uh,
Uh, they train with the best of facilities, yeah. they're in a very good environment, they actually, you know, um, stay under the tutelage of the best tutor, you know, when it has to do with, you know, football and all of that. But here in the country, of course, just like you mentioned, we don't have all of this, talking about facilities, you know, proper organization, of course, of the league, you know, and all of that. The big question is, how long, you know, uh, would things, of course, continue this way? in uh, the country i think it's then time for we to see how we can pick you know players from the league you take a look at uh, a team like uh, tunisia you take a look at a team like uh, morocco even south africa as well Bulk some bulk of those players bulk of the players you know in those teams are picked from the uh, clubs in the country clubs in their leagues uh, so i think uh, we should start thinking in that particular direction if stanley wabali could come from the Nigerian Premier Football League, uh, despite the struggle, but he was still able to get to South Africa and was able to get the number one uh, position when it has to do with goalkeeping department. It means other Nigerians, other Nigerian players or goalkeepers as well, can still go out there and uh, do exploits, you know, as it is. And this is one thing we have to understand at this moment. Stanley Wabali, of course, is a man that uh, we've learned a lot from, especially when it has to do with uh, what we have here. You know in the country but michael in 2023 he earned his first cap you know for the nigerian national team the international friendly against mexico in the u.s and he considered four goals but uh, showed uh, some uh, progress and uh, potential and uh, talking about this year i, I, I also you know uh, when the super Eagles, of course were having goalkeeping uh, issue francis was all not being uh, the best uh ojo of course no much you know confidence on him as well the other man, Maduko Koye, of course, uh, the man has not really um, shown himself. I think there's this other man, of course, uh, in Israel. I uh, try to recall his name, you know, at this uh, point. Um, I think uh, he, when he came down to the uh, team, he had some, you know, um, some kind of move. He showed some progress. But later he returned back, and Pesero, of course, didn't actually go down to the direction. When he was actually searching for a goalkeeper, he went down to South Africa and to meet Stanley Wabali and now uh, Wabali is now the most talked about you know uh, goalkeeper now for the Super Eagles of uh, Nigeria uh, I don't know what you make of it and uh, taking a look at what the man has done so far what do you make of you know his uh, you know keeping abilities on the pitch uh, well for me I, I think uh, he has been able to bring back uh, that uh, confidence that belief within the defensive line of uh, Super Eagles though his first uh, national duty, he considered four goals, mm. you know, and uh, many who might not know the quality that he possessed then, uh, you know, condemned him, you know, because of the fact that he considered four goals. But then, uh, some who are, you know, very, very good in thinking outside the box when it has to do with the game, talking about the run later game, truly understand that uh, most of those goals were not actually his fault, you know. No matter how you are good as a goalkeeper, yeah, be you the, the Fabian Bates of this world, be you the, the Chilavat of this world, be you, you know, the Gigi Buffon, you know, of this world, you know, uh, these are great uh, keepers that I've just mentioned, but uh, there are still, you know, lots of them. But if you don't have a very solid defense, my brother, you'll be as vulnerable as anybody, you know, and that is what happened to him in his uh, first uh, you know, international uh, game where he considered four goals in uh, while well, well, later friendly games in Mexico. But then, uh, from then down till this day, when Jose Pizarro actually went back to South Africa to pick him and give him a, you know, another opportunity, he has been able to bring uh, back that, uh, you know, understanding and trust within his uh, defense line. You know, ever since uh, uh, Vincent Tenyama left, we keep mentioning Vincent Tenyama every now and then. Why? Because what? What he, he was able to do with the national team, whenever Vincent Enyama is in, the, in between the stick, you, you are rest assured that at least go, not that he will not concede, but then a uh, bulk of those goals will not be actually at, uh, directly attributed to his fault, mm. you know, because he is able to hold his own. He's not that tall, but yet he was able to make some, you know, point blank saves that, you know, even the best of, uh, you know, goalkeepers in the world cannot save. You know, the person that came close to him was Kali Keme, you know, uh, to stabilize that defensive uh, line in the Super Eagles. But then, 
Lukemia caught his uh, stay uh, very short in the national team. We've tried a whole lot of them since then. Daniel Akpeyi, Francis Uzoho, Maduka Okoye, to mention but a few, but yet none of them has been able to give us that reliability, that confidence, that balance, that belief, you know, to be able to command his defense line. But since uh, Mwabali came into the picture, he has been able to change that narrative. I, I mean, nobody remembers, you know, Francis Uzoho, even Fran uh, 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 Okoye right now because of his. Uh, you know, confidence on the ball. He, he, I mean, he, he has this, uh, in, you know, intimidating presence, and he has this good communication skills with uh, his defense line. You, you see him in some of the games that he has played so far. You see him whenever there seems to be a little error. You see him talking with Truth Ekon uh, or Semi Ajayi or even Calvin Bassi. What is that telling? Is very clear that he understand how to organize his defense line. So he has brought in that stability within the defense line of Nigeria. And because that is what a good keeper brings to the table, his ability to communicate effectively with uh, his defense line and his ability to also, you know, give corrections when necessary. These are some of the things that, you know, bring back the confidence that even if you are a defender, you lose guard or you make a mistake, you are rest assured that at least the keeper will actually do his best, you know, to cover some of those, uh, my error. Because errors are bound in football. We understand because if there were no errors in football, then goals won't come. But the ability to limit those errors gives you an upper hand over your opponent. And this is what Sterling Wabali has brought into the Super Eagles. He has brought that stability. He has brought that confidence. He has brought that belief within the back line of the Super Eagles. And that is why you know, we have come uh, thus far. You saw some of the point blank save that he made in some of the few games so far. I mean, uh, the, the young man, you know, has been very, very effective so far. Uh, but what's the way forward? Uh, you expect him, of course, uh, to leave Chipper United anytime soon? <laughs> uh, looking at uh, his exploits so far, and uh, for the fact that his uh, Chipper United, uh, you know, uh, have also acknowledged his exploit as well. And that is why they had to up. Uh, his uh, price tag. If any other big teams come for him, I mean, why would he uh, stay here? He should go out there and make money for himself and even become more uh, popular. What if a team like Arsenal, Chelsea, mm. Liverpool, Madrid, name them, the big clubs in this world come for him? Will you advise him not to go? Of course he should go. So if any bigger offer comes his way, you know, bigger offer, not just bigger offer, but an offer that we give him that good platform to express himself the more, mm. you know, to be able to showcase his talent to the world, I will advise that he go. But for now, he still remains to be seen because we are still very much in the African Cup of Nations. You know, by the end of the African Cup of Nations, maybe many teams out there all over the world, they are definitely watching and they mm. are sending their scouts all over the world to, you know, watch the African Cup of Nations. Certainly, teams out there in Europe is definitely keeping a close tab on him. Okay, at this uh, point, to call it a wrap, I believe we'll be able to know more about uh, the Super Ego School keeper Stanley Wabali. And of course, uh, Wabali has an estimated net worth of $800,000. Uh, so maybe after this African Cup of Nations, that price, of course, that net worth will increase. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, next week will be another time for sports personality. Michael, it's been an impressive time this morning. It's always a great moment doing this with you. Don't forget, peace and unity over the pathways that to progress. My name is Kinsley Manuel. Thanks for watching.